Tech Jacks here. This video is a video on how to configure discovery in our SCCM lab. Um, right now, I don't have any users showing up in our users container under assets and compliance. I don't have any devices. Uh, so what I'm going to go ahead and do is actually configure the uh, discovery so that SCCM can go and look into certain OUs in our Active Directory and pull the objects that it needs and put them in the correct collections that are currently set up. Uh, so let's go ahead and take a quick look at that. So under administration, you would want to go to the hierarchy configuration. Under hierarchy configuration, you can see that we have discovery methods. Under discovery methods, you should see Active Directory Force Discovery, Active Directory Group Discovery, System Discovery, User Discovery, Heartbeat Discovery, and Network Discovery. The description to the to the right uh, gives you a little bit of information about what each one of these do. Uh, you can also go to TechNet and Google in order to find out a little bit more about it. However, you know you can take a best guess um, uh, attempt at what it is by the name of the actual object that you're selecting. Uh, so we want to actually discover our four. So we're going to go ahead, right click on that, and hit Properties, and we're going to enable Active Directory Forest Discovery. As you can see. Uh, there's information here in the general tab about what's going to take place when you do this. So we're going to go ahead and enable Active Directory Force Discovery and also automatically create Active Directory site boundaries when they are discovered. And we're going to automatically create IP address ranges. And we're going to go ahead and click OK. So you're going to get prompted whether or not you want to do a full discovery as soon as possible. In a lab environment, it's perfectly fine to go ahead and do so. But if you're in a giant enterprise and you already have objects and things like that, we're well, going to have to uh, consider uh, what kind of network impact that might you know, occur when you do that. However, in this particular situation, we can do it without any fear of having to give any second thought to it. So, boom. Yes. Next, we're going to go ahead and discover any security groups that we may have. We might want to associate security groups with role-based access and, and things like that. So getting those groups uh, pulled in, that's going to be a benefit to us. So let's go ahead and click on Properties. I'm going to go ahead again and find my checkbox that says Enable Active Directory Group Discovery. Here, I'm going to go ahead and click Add, and I'm going to go by Location. And I'm just going to put in a generic name like Security Groups. And I'm going to click Browse, and this is going to give me a little uh, tree of my uh, domain uh, control uh, domain OUs here. And I'm going to gra grab my groups. I have my groups highlighted. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I'm going to allow it to research, uh, recursively search Active Directory for child containers. So if I had sub uh, uh, groups and sub OUs, then it's going to go ahead and pull those as well. And as you can see, there's more information here about uh, what's going on in this frame. But this should pull all the security groups that I have uh, designated in that OU. Now, um, I usually go ahead and, and check the option so that it only discovers computers and uh, that have been logged into the domain in a given period of time. So 90 days, um, if the machine hasn't logged in in 90 days, I don't want to pull it into SCCM because I think that machine probably needs to be scavenged or disabled or deleted or whatever is happening in your environment. If a machine hasn't been logged in in 90 days, it's probably either lost or it's probably no longer active. Um, and, and that goes as well for any machine that hasn't had to check back in and get a Kerberos update or change its password. If it's not on the domain and it doesn't have a, a, a relevant password, then you might want to be careful about uh, giving access and, and, and importing uh, objects like that. I'm going to go ahead and click yes to do you want to run a full discovery. I'm going to go ahead and grab my systems now. So again, the theme is pretty simple. You want to go ahead and click enable. I'm going to go ahead and browse to my uh, path. This is for computers, I believe, my system. So uh, there are a couple of um, OUs that I have computers in. Um, I have a workstations OU. If you uh, uh, open it up, you can see that I have uh, child OUs that are broken down by operating system. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and allow it to recursively search and pull objects from each one of those folders. I'm going to also add my servers OU. 
because we want to keep our servers separated from our regular desktops because we might have to have different group policies uh, set to them. We might have to have different client uh, uh, policies and, and uh, from SCCM applied to those as well. We don't want to patch those at the same time. They're not going to have the same, uh, you know, uh, weight in terms of when we do things with them. I'm going to go ahead and add servers and I'm going to also add my domain controllers because we well we do want to manage our domain controllers as well uh, depending on your environment you may have a lot more uh, uh, restrictive policy about what you do and how do you have this set up in SCCM but in our lab environment we're going to add whatever we want so we're going to go ahead and grab our domain controllers as well I'm going to go ahead and click our options to only add machines that have been logged into or you know uh, the passwords changed in the last 90 days. I'm going to do a full discovery. And I'm going to also go ahead and quickly add our users. So I'm going to go ahead and grab accounts because our users are in our accounts. And I believe that's the only place I have users other than my default. I'm sorry, our uh, default uh, users uh, folder. We don't have any option there to change the 90 day uh, password rule there so we should be fine so I'm going to go ahead and go to our assets and compliance and as you can see uh, we have some machines showing up now um, under users we have some security groups showing up and we have a couple of user accounts showing up so right now it's going it, it's pulling in users and it's pulling in devices now which is a good thing I just went back to users and it pulled in even more. If we go over to our actual domain controller and, and grab our Active Directory users and computers, you can see that in our accounts we have names like Alfred Norris and, and, and John Smith. Um, and, and those names are going to be reflected in our SCCM console. As you can see, there's Alfred Norris and John Smith. So our discovery has worked. SCCM is now pulling information from our Active Directory and is able to populate that. So the only thing that would be left to do is, is according to your particular locations uh, policy for how to filter us users and groups and computers and how to organize them in subfolders and things like that, you can set it up so that they don't all go into one generic uh, uh, user's container or one generic devices container, what you would probably be able to do is go ahead and create um, um, new folders and device collections and you can start pulling your computers there. But for now, the actual option of uh, enabling active uh, directory force discovery and group discovery and system discovery, we just went through those steps and as you can see, it went ahead and started pulling information from active directory and allowing for those things to show up in SCCM. So what that would allow us to do is, is that uh, if we had a client uh, install uh, situation where we wanted machines that were in SCCM to automatically get the SCCM client installed on them, well, we can set it up to automatically go ahead and push out to any device that's in SCCM, and then those machines will get our client, and they can start getting software and packages without us having to manually push or install our client. And that's what we're going to go ahead and show next. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is stop this video and we're going to do another video that talks a little bit about how to set up the client uh, uh, for SCCM so that you can push those to your host and have your host communicating with SCCM and getting policies and things like that. So hopefully this video has helped out. If you have any questions, again, I will link to the TechNet articles about what these particular discovery mechanisms do. You can read up a little bit more about them, but in terms of actually getting in there and figuring out where you actually uh, configure those things, uh, we went ahead and we went into the administration tab. We went into the hierarchy configuration and went under the discovery methods, and we did a little quick demonstration about what options you might need to select in order to get that to work. So thank you, uh, until next time. Thank you.